is the media a fourth branch of government? This is a big question to be asking. We're just going to consider little pieces of it today. So the three branches of government, we know. They're the legislative branch, Congress, the executive branch, the president and the bureaucracy, and the judicial branch, the Supreme Court and the lower federal courts. So these three branches are written in the body of the Constitution, created by the Constitution. The press is not. However, the press is protected by the Fourth Amendment, sorry, Fourth, First Amendment to the Constitution. <laughs> Apologies, the First Amendment to the Constitution, and that protects freedom of the press. So it could be a fourth branch in that it is protected by the Constitution. Now, it can also serve to check those first three branches, right? It can tell us, hey, Congress isn't doing what they said they were going to do. The president isn't keeping his campaign promises. The court is leaking this um, ruling that might overturn Roe v. Wade, which ultimately the leaked ruling was the ruling that came out of the court in Dobbs. So the press can report to us on the three branches of government, and potentially that can keep them in check. Right? The three branches of government are going to do things if they know the media is going to report on them as really bad things. So they need to be careful to think about what the public is going to hear and through the media. Therefore, that can be a check on those three branches. Now, the First Amendment provides really broad protections. Libel laws, prior restraint laws, time, place, and manner restrictions all are written in favor of the press. But they are still laws that in some ways limit the press. So we can see that the government can keep the press in check, at least to an extent. So we can see that the press, while not explicitly a fourth branch of government, is protected by the Constitution, like the original three branches, and can check the three branches and be checked by the three branches, again, at least to an extent. Now, we can see things like the Pentagon Papers case, where the uh, press really helped keep the government in check, re revealed to us malfeasance that had been going on within the government, and ultimately contributed to Nixon's resignation, which you know, is kind of an ultimate check on the presidency, contributing to a president stepping down because he'd done enough things wrong that he felt he couldn't continue his presidency because the public now knew about these things. But this isn't unlimited, right? Uh, there are cases where the government can check the press right back. Now, this again suggests that the press, the, me the news media, is a fourth branch. But it may be fundamentally entwined with the government in a way that suggests it's something else. The news media is, the news, I apologize, is very much a joint production between the news media and politicians. This can actually lead to a prisoner's dilemma in that politicians absolutely need the press in order to access us, the public right, to get their message out to voters. But the press need politicians because they need to cover the stories, cover what politicians do. Without politicians, there's no news to report. So we see that they need each other, but they also can't trust the other one. The news media wants gotcha stories. They want to report bad things that politicians have done because we're more likely to read those stories, right? We're not as likely to read the everything's great. Politicians are meeting their campaign promises, but we are going to read how this politician really broke a promise, right? That's something that's more compelling to an average reader, um, to really anyone. So we are going, so the press is going to want gotcha stories, to want stories that make politicians, that cast politicians in a negative light. Politicians, of course, don't want that, 
right? They want the exact opposite. They want good stories, stories to cast them in a positive light. So politicians can restrict access, can say to the news, no, we're not going to let you report, right? We're not going to let you in. We're not going to release. We're not going to have press conferences or we're going to exclude you from press conferences. Now, for the most part, that can't be done. Um, if you exclude one news outlet, you do have to exclude all of them. Um, but we can still see that happen. Or we can just cancel press conferences if you don't like how the press is covering you. Of course, ultimately, even though, for example, Trump in our little um, picture did this, he did cancel a lot of press conferences. He ultimately had to have them because he had to let the press in to get access. So the politicians can't trust the media to report on them positively, but they do need the media. Now, the press can't always trust politicians, right? Politicians sometimes use leaks and trial balloons to like test things, to say, hey, I wonder if this policy would be received favorably. But then if it isn't, they're not going to keep going with the policy. So the press can sort of be like, wait, should we be reporting on this? If maybe it's not even going to go anywhere, we might look stupid, right? So the press can't always trust politicians are giving them enough access, are letting them in on stories they need, and are not sort of misleading them in some way, trying to throw them off the scent of a story that would be would get more ratings but look worse for the politician. So this is a classic prisoner's dilemma. They need each other, but they can't trust each other. And because of this, we end up with news as really less of an objective record and sort of a full check on the other branches and more of a particular representation of facts and events. Of course, we know that each branch can't perfectly check another branch, right? The Supreme Court, um, kept checking President um, Franklin Roosevelt on his New Deal programming, and ultimately he threatened a court packing plan. And then, because of a lot of retirements and deaths, were, was able to put a lot of his own nominees on the court. And ultimately, they started supporting him. So we can see that this is not dissimilar from the relationships between the other branches. So, is the media a fourth branch? It's still an open question that we can consider and make arguments maybe for both sides of it, yes and no. 